In problem number 37 of section 4.2, we're asked to show that the Maclaurin series of an even function has only even powers of x, and similarly, the Maclaurin series of an odd function has only odd powers of x. Now, the first step to uh, we had taken doing this is kind of proving, say, a little bit of a lemma. Uh, in other words, if we're going to say that uh, if uh, f is odd, and defined at zero, then the f of zero has to equal zero. Now, the reason I say that is because, well, since f is odd, we must have the f of zero is equal to, or well, f of, well, since zero is equal to minus zero, we must have the f of 0 is equal to f of minus 0, which then must equal negative f of 0. Well, here we have, we just look at the last two, uh, you know, the first and the, the last parts, so we get f of 0 is equal to minus f of 0. Well, that can only happen if f of 0 is actually equal to 0. This is a little thing that we'll use a couple times throughout the proof. The second part, which is a little bit trickier, uh, we're going to show that the derivative of an odd number, or of a, excuse me, the derivative of an odd function is even, and similarly, the derivative of an even function is odd. So let's suppose again that we have an odd function. So so if f is odd, that means that. f of negative x is negative f of x. Now let's just take the derivative of both sides. So here we have f prime of negative x, and then applying the chain rule, multiply by minus 1. And on the left hand side, we get uh, negative f prime of x. Here we can cancel out the the negative signs, and we get f prime of negative x is equal to uh, f prime of x. So this shows that uh, f prime of x uh, is even. We're going to do a similar thing if um, uh, to show that the derivative of an even function is odd. So if f is even, well, that means that f of negative x is equal to f of x. And just taking derivatives on both sides, we get, and applying the chain rule, we get negative f prime of negative x is equal to f prime of x. And if we multiply by negative 1 on both sides, we get f prime of negative x is equal to negative f prime of x. So f prime is odd. And it's not really too difficult to see from this that, well, if we took, say, uh, an even number of derivatives of an odd function, that we would end up with an odd function. Because well, we would start with an odd one. Odd function, we take its derivatives, and then we'd end up with an even function. If it gets derivative again, so now two times, we would be back to an odd function. If we did that you know, an even number of times, we would end up back to an odd function. And similarly, if we started out with an even function, took its derivative um, an odd number of times, we would end up, well, first time would give us an odd function, second time would give us an even, then we'd be back to odd, and so on. So uh, in short, you know, if we take an even number derivative of an odd function or an odd number derivative of an even function, then 
we'll get back to an odd function. So we're going to use, put all this information together and show that if we have, well, show that, you know, the Lorentz series of an even function can only contain even or odd powers of x. So let's suppose that um, f is, uh, just start, start out by assuming f is even. Well, let's take, um, so f is even, we know that the odd, and we have this little theorem that we just proved about um, odd functions uh, that I just erased here. Let's take, um, let's take an odd number of derivatives. So, so if f is even, let's let n be odd, and then look at the nth derivative of f. So. So if f, n is odd, then uh, the nth derivative, uh, and f is even, then the nth derivative is also odd. But we know that um, the nth derivative, uh, the um, nth derivative evaluated at zero is also just going to be um, the term bn if we wrote out, you know, the, this will be the nth coefficient of the Maclaurin series. But since um, the nth derivative of x is, or of f is odd, then evaluating this at zero uh, by the first little thing that we proved shows that, well, this must actually equal zero. And n was just any odd number, so see that all the odd, every single odd coefficient uh, must be zero. So the only possible non-zero coefficients are the even ones. But remember, we assume that f is even. So that shows half of the problem. And the other half is pretty much the same, same thing, just kind of everything in reverse. So let's let f be odd. And let's take an even number of derivatives. So let's let n be even. Now we'll look at, again, the nth derivative of f. But remember how that we have you know, an odd function. We're taking an even number of, der of derivatives. This, uh, again, will be odd. And then the rest of the problem goes the exact same way. Well. Evaluating this at zero gives the nth coefficient, which remember now that since this is an odd function, this must be equal to zero. And we see that all, uh, uh, all even coefficients now must be zero, which means that the only possible non-zero coefficients are the odd ones uh, matching up with the fact that uh, f is an odd function. 